The views expressed on this channel are only a few of many possible ways to achieve your desired outcome. The suggestions present on this channel are not one size fits all. So let's begin. Hello, hi, so welcome to uh, another uh, week of shadow work. We are not getting into another shadow work lesson only because it has not been a week since I uploaded the last lesson. Uh, and you really need that week to uh, really take in the lesson and then do the attached uh, shadow work prompts that we gave. Really have time to marinate on it and go back and think about it. So we're doing a mini exercise today. We're doing another self check-in, yes. Um, this chart should be familiar to you. If it is not, then I recommend you uh, go back and watch our last exercise or our last lesson. Because uh, we made this together step by step. And I talked about how um, I talked about how uh, you could make your own version of this chart and it would. It's technically printable. I mean, you can print it in color, but let me get rid of these dots here. If you, if you want to use your colored ink, you can, but if you make this grayscale, you can go ahead and uh, print this out. And then depending on the day, just circle whatever you're feeling and you can really get that self check in. We talked about the importance of uh, why self check ins are good and important in shadow work. Um, just a small recap, because really, if, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you should go back to when we first made this. But um, we talked about it, right? So, you know, when you sit down to do shadow work, you, you, you know, sit down and, and start trying to do deep dives into those uh, really deep questions, right? Like, when was the last time someone really disappointed you and it really destroyed your spirit? And how have you been letting yourself down and all these very uh, painful questions? However, um, I just want to stress the importance of understanding your uh, your emotional state your physical state just your state going into shadow work because if you sit down and you're feeling unmotivated and you've been feeling unmotivated all week you know you get the question or the prompt of how am I letting myself down you're going to put something like oh I'm so lazy and I can't break through it oh I'm so uh just lazy and unmotivated and I don't know what's wrong with me you're going to answer like that right which is fine because it's part of your process but if you do this little chart first um like, for instance, last time I said I felt just unmotivated and kind of tired. I felt restless. I felt tired. I talked about how I hadn't been eating properly and how I hadn't been sleeping right. And I just I wanted to rest. Uh, I was sleepy. And so out of ice, I just kind of went through my list and checked everything I was feeling, even if it seemed contrasting. I checked it and then I connected some of the ones that I thought might be connected. For instance, sad. Um was I unmotivated because I was depressed, right? Sorry, you might hear some dogs barking outside. Was I unmotivated because I was just depressed, but I was feeling kind of inspired and, you know, I had this whole thing going on. But then I could also take out this these connections here. I'm sleepy. What? Did, how, was I, how was I doing that day? Uh, my mind was not racing, but I was daydreaming a lot. I couldn't focus. I was very sleepy, but I acknowledged that I hadn't slept well and I hadn't been sleeping well. So sleepy daydreaming I want rest I want rest I need to clear my head so if you know you're sleep deprived uh it's no wonder you're unmotivated right your your brain is not getting that rest it needs to function and then I talked about how I uh I was either dehydrated or, or hungry that day I can't remember and how I hadn't been getting basically I hadn't been getting my nutrients I hadn't been sleeping well and so Sitting down to do my shadow work, I wouldn't put, oh, I'm so lazy these past couple of weeks. There's something wrong with me. I'm just so lazy. And, and if I do enough affirmations and if I do enough meditation, if I do enough this and do enough that, it'll fix it. All in all, I just needed to sleep. Right? So that's why we do this. Then we had like a, a second check uh, for people who experience chronic pain or chronic illness. And uh, let me see. And... uh. Oh, yeah, before I talked about how, you know, I was breaking out a little bit. Now it's only been a couple days. Uh, this was the 19th. Today's the 23rd. But my breaking my my uh, breakout has gone down. So whatever was happening, you know, was was. Uh, very temporary. My face was broken out very bad. And I said on the left side, 
And uh, then I said that my, uh, it's even down here on the left side. And, and then I said that my stomach and my, my back were hurting and I felt dizzy and I had a headache and, you know, I felt like I felt bloated and not good. And then I looked up uh, in the video what acne on the left side meant because I only knew that uh, when you break out in certain areas of your face, it means different things. Like if you're breaking out on your chin, it means like hormonal things and such. And lo and behold, breaking out on the left side of your face meant usually pointed to having poor digestion. I didn't know they were linked, but notice in the chronic pain, the only place that really, really hurt was my stomach. So I'm not getting nutrients. I was dehydrated. Of course, I had a headache. Of course, I was dizzy. Uh, I'm not getting, you know, the sleep or the nutrients I need. So suddenly that unmotivated and that sad doesn't seem like a personal thing, right? It's no longer personal. Like, oh, I'm just an unmotivated person. I can detach myself from that and go, I'm not unmotivated. I'm just, I, I need to rest I, properly. I need to eat properly. And uh, so that's why I'm back to a couple of days later, rested and uh, feeling much better and uh, feeling like I'm able to do my, my shadow work with a more clear head. Now you can do your shadow work uh, while sick. I was clearly, I was doing my shadow work while not in the greatest condition, right? But what I'm just saying, before you sit down and do your shadow work, and you start attributing things to just your, your natural state, maybe slow down and, and do this first. So before we do our shadow work, we have three shadow work questions. So before we do that, we are going to do our self-assessment. This is kind of like a parallel play time. So I already taught you how to make this chart. And I said you could fill it in with whatever you want. It doesn't have to just look like this. But um, uh but uh, so this is for kind of like a parallel play moment. So we can all just kind of uh, do this together. Or if you really want to see how, how I do it on the fly, you can. I don't think too hard about it. I just kind of do like a quick self-assessment. So how am I feeling? Am I happy today? I feel pretty, I feel pretty happy. But I also feel fairly peaceful. Um, not, not too chaotic. Um. Let me see. Uh, not really sad, not really bored, not really angry. I do feel kind of weird, but I think it's hunger. I think it's weakness from hunger. Because <laughs> it's strange, because even though I've been eating uh, rather healthily today, I feel kind of dizzy. I, I might actually need sugar. Uh, so I'll probably put that on this, on this side. And notice that I have the date. Oh, I I have the date and I have the time. Well, let me change. It's one thirty. And I talk about the importance of the date and the time. The date we we know why that's important. So you can kind of track how you're doing. Uh, but also, uh, I noticed that uh, depending on when you catch me, I'm more likely to put. I'm more likely to put peaceful sad or peaceful bored during the daytime it's like the afternoon but if you catch me at night i'm much much more likely to put happy 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 and energetic just because i get that mood that mood or energetic boost at night and that's something i, I do acknowledge uh plus you can if you can remember when you eat certain things uh you can you can track what foods you eat that make you feel really good like not just coffee but like it's just a self-assessment. So before you sit down and do shadow work, you're not attributing things to yourself. That's just kind of like, kind of miscellaneous, right? Well, not miscellaneous, but, you know. So you do yours with me. I already taught you how to do all this. Sorry. Am I feeling hungry? Yeah, I actually am. But I think I need sugar because I've eaten like a whole apple, a whole bunch of tea. I have an apple right here. ASMR. I think I need sugar. I'm not sleepy, but I could go back to sleep definitely. I want to lay down. You don't want to hear the chewing ASMR. Hold on, let me back away. I'm not really feeling unmotivated. I'm not really feeling overstimulated. 
Um, I'm just kind of like me right now, right? Uh, I do feel a little daydreamy. I don't feel blocked uh, in any way. I feel very daydreamy. Like, if I could, like, double check this, I would. I would like some entertainment. I kind of do want to go to sleep. I always want to rest, though. And that's one thing I'm wondering. Is it my personality trait that I can always lay down? Like, if you ask me, do you want to lay down? It's always going to be a yes. <laughs> I really want entertainment more. Uh, but maybe this is something I should track. You know, if it's something that does pop up often, maybe it is something I should watch out for. Uh, I don't really want to do anything with my hands. I don't really want to. I don't really want to try anything new. Um, the talk. I could go for a good conversation right now. I don't really want to talk, but I could. I could definitely go for one. I need something sweet because I've even though I've been eating, I feel kind of weak. And it might not actually be sleepy and needing to rest. It might be I need to intake just a little bit more glucose. Uh, I want something salty. I feel like I could just snack in general. Um, but let me see. But it's not hunger. <laughs> um, if you have dietary problems, I imagine this chart would be good for that too. Doesn't need to chew. Yeah, I could go for a drink. Um, thinking about none of that, just fantasy. Not quite anxious, but a few, few intrusive thoughts. Need. I'm good there. I'm good there. Yeah, definitely some sugar. I've been eating all sorts of vegetables today and fruit, but I need more sugar. Already cleaned up, did all that. Uh, no, nah. okay. Headache today? No, I'm feeling great. Mouth pain? No, I do have a sore throat today. Boo hoo. Allergies? Not feel good. My digestion has gotten better, but it's not the greatest. You know, actually, I don't have a headache, but I feel a pressure behind my eyes that I wasn't noticing earlier. And I think when you do these self check ins, cause I, I sat here and I really had to think about it. I'm like, I do feel a pressure behind my eyes and I don't know what that means. So. No acne today. Hair's fine. Skin's fine. Nails are feeling strong. Circulation feels fine. Uh. I do have a minor rash. I do have a minor one. Very minor. But that could be related to something. Probably the digestive issues. Okay. So. Now if we. Stop. If we duplicate this, right? And we connect. I'm just connecting the ones I think are connected. They don't have to be, but since it's like my body, I feel like I can, in my, in my self analysis, I feel like like I think I think there's a clear path. Let me get let me get some. <laughs> just need to get some sugar not even really not even really sleepy or maybe I am I mean I didn't sleep terribly but I wouldn't say it was the greatest sleep it was very sporadic so probably not good sleep at all oops and
Uh. Oh yeah, it's probably. Boo boo boo. And that's why I say, uh, well, that's why a lot of people say self care goes really hand in hand with the shadow work too. Because it's like, before I sit down and go, oh, I'm feeling so scattered and restless and oh my goodness, my problem is what affirmations can I do to focus? I need to meditate. I mean, you can always meditate, but I probably just need to eat some sugar, right? Put a little honey in my tea and I could meditate after that. But you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I feel so restless and, and, and under stimulated. And I don't know what's going on. Also, I have ADHD. So dopamine <laughs> goes crazy. But it's just like, before I sit down and do my shadow work and I start blaming myself for stuff. You know, I could do affirmations, but I could first also take like two seconds to eat like a spoonful of honey. <laughs> but since I am in a good mood, uh, we'll make this pink. And you know, I it's like I it's like I want energy. But I believe the lack of sugar is uh, is what's getting in the way. So we're about to get to the to the uh, shadow work questions, but please, please do your chart because uh, we talked about it. Shadow work is just uh, this line's not perfect. We talked about how shadow work is just intense self awareness, but it's like getting into your subconscious i hate that it locks on to places on the circle i don't need it to lock on I just... <laughs> ah, why is it locking on Can canva take that feature away i don't like that <laughs> Can I just put it i can't even line it don't matter canva i hate that feature <laughs> um but actually you know i see one more connection and I think it, that's why it's so, so good to get uh, there you go. That's why I think it's so, so good to uh, do this alongside your shadow work because uh, now you might have trouble when you first start off, especially with the connecting part. Like you probably won't have any trouble just clicking whatever you feel. But when it comes to the connecting part, you might have trouble when you first start off, especially if you don't know yourself and know what you have going on. But I've been doing this for like a cool minute. So I'm like felt fairly familiar and I'm very easy at like mapping things. All right. So I checked everything I was feeling, right? And now I just kind of connected a few things. So happy. So I'm probably not actually like uh, unmotivated and overstimulated. I'm just like, I feel good and I feel peaceful, but I feel like, huh, probably need sugar. Uh, so I feel peaceful, hungry, and I think I'm sleepy, but I don't really feel sleepy. So I think it's just me being weak, but also I have anemia. <laughs> uh, so it could be, you know, it could be anemia, lack of sugar. I just feel kind of spacey, right? I want, under the want column, I want to rest. Food, I probably need something that does a little bit more glucose need to eat, <laughs> right? And so emotions, but I do feel happy. I feel a little bit restless. And I said, I do kind of want to talk and, and, and be kind of vibey and have fun. So, but you know, what's probably stopping me from doing that, come all the way back to hungry. Like if we, we could do that, we could just take it all the way back to hungry. Right. And so now we have like a very complex. Uh, one thing is complex. But we have a very, let me see. I mean, make the map so that you can understand it. Don't make it look crazy if you can't understand it. But like, I wish it would just go straight down. <laughs> Jesus. I'll make it pink. I think I'll make it pink. So restless is linked to hungry. Uh, this is what I want to do. And I'm not doing it because it's linked, also linked to hungry. Uh, 
And this is that dopamine. Oh yeah, that's what I was gonna say. This is that dopamine because I do have ADHD. And when you and when you they say certain tasks, people don't have to think about it. And you might have ADHD. I'm not diagnosing you though. This is not me. But people don't have to think about doing certain things. But people with ADHD, uh, we are already like our dopamine is already depleted. So rather than you know, the standard way they tell people to do things is just do what you need to do. And then afterwards, reward yourself for doing that thing. And then, you know, then rest, right? So, you know, you work all week and then weekend at the end of the week, the weekend is when you rest, you eat what you want. Uh, you reward yourself. Then Sunday's like when you rest, right? And then Monday you go back to work. Uh, but when you have ADHD, you kind of have to do a little bit different you have to do the thing that gets your dopamine up to normal levels first because those other people already have their dopamine at a normal level it's a chemical your brain and your body needs and we don't it's not it's not set up good for us so we have to do the thing that gets our dopamine up first and then we have to do the the task or the work and then we don't reward ourselves at the end. It's like we have to reward ourselves in like in small bits throughout, right? Um, I think a lot of people with ADHD uh can relate. So before getting into the thing, it's like this is all stimulus. This is all like each one of these is stimulus. It's like I need some stimulus. So not only do I need probably a little bit of glucose, I need stimulus. So now that I know where I'm at, dopamine's probably a little bit low. Uh, we're not really going to talk about dopamine and serotonin and all that because I'm just not a doctor. <laughs> but, you know, so now that I understand where I'm at, dopamine, uh, dopamine's low. Uh, it, it feels pretty low. Dopamine's low. Um, I don't know. I don't know why this is. I don't know. Well, I mean, I do know, but I don't. Do go Go ahead and check it. <laughs> all right. All right, and and having chronic allergies and and chronic poor digestion can lead to uh, worse mental health. So if you're shadow working and you're like, well, every day, every day I feel kind of kind of crappy and and I'm so depressed. Well, I mean, you got that poor digestion and you're not you don't have that balance going on in your body. Don't beat yourself up about it. You know what I mean. So I'm not beating myself up about anything really. So this is a cover I kind of slapped together last minute. I didn't even really blend the scales. I did kind of down here, but I didn't up here. It's kind of cute. It looks it looks very hmm, spooky. But um, so we're getting into those three questions. So this uh this is the homework for last uh last uh last lesson, and uh, I gave you a prompt, and we kind of followed that prompt. We we made our list, um, and we answered a few questions together. So today we are going to don't 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 read these pages. They're spoilers. They're spoilers. I mean, you can if you want to. <laughs> They're spoilers. All right, all right. Today is the twenty third. So, with that said. Top three things uh, I learned this week. Uh, you can put something from the lesson or you could put something that you uh, just saw somewhere else. I feel like I learned something. But they, what they say, I it's some quote like. Hold on. It was it was some quote that was like they're not your type they're your pattern, and everybody was like having like big breakthroughs and I was just like, wow, <laughs> now I now it's not hitting as hard, uh, and it and it had to do with dating like oh that's not that that type of person is not actually your type that's just your pattern, and we talk about it in shadow work and energy protection a lot of courts we talk about how uh the brain and the subconscious loves patterns that's why uh. Someone hurts your feelings and then someone compliments you. Uh, depending on who you are, you're going to cling more to the compliment or cling more to the to the uh, insult, right? Most people cling more to insult, but you you know, you know, meet those people where someone's like, uh, 
what's that one quote? There's like a meme and it's just like, you, the the meme is like, you are a horrible person. You think just because you're pretty, you can get away with whatever you want and da 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 and I hate you and I can't stand you. And then the person looks at them and goes, oh, so you say I'm pretty? <laughs> like some people will cling more to the compliment. Some people will cling more to the insult. And, and that's your pattern, right? Because like, oh, I'm just a negative person. Oh, I'm just a positive person. Your subconscious is going to automatically try to reaffirm. That's why we talked about people who are wounded in certain ways will end up in relationships that kind of exacerbate that wound. Because it's not because they're doing it intentionally, subconsciously. Your subconscious want, kind of wants uh, reassurance or re, re, reaffirmation more than it wants the right thing, right? So if someone says, you're stupid, and then like several other people in your life have kind of said, yeah, we think you're stupid too. Uh, your subconscious is not going to go, well, let me prove to you all the ways you're smart and look for that. Like you're going to have to actively do that to rewire your brain, right? Your subconscious is going to go, well, those eight people called us stupid. And, and maybe this ninth person just called us stupid again. And then it's going to constantly be looking for that, right? So in relationships, they said, that's not your type, that's your pattern. But I feel like that applies for like most things in life, right? Um, if you want to remix it, we could say... We could say this, right? If I if I if I click this, uh, that's not your trait. That's your pattern. Uh, I feel like a lot of people get very attached to certain to certain things. What is this, page twenty four? Okay, page twenty four. So one of the first exercises we did was why am I? So all the things people had kind of said to you growing up that you internalized. Why am I so, you know, clumsy? You know, you know, I was always told I'm sensitive. Why am I so sensitive? And why am I so sad all the time? And why am I so picky? Da, 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 right. And of course, I don't believe any of these anymore, but because I did my shadow work. <laughs> but, you know, uh, things that really make us feel, you know, why am I so cringe? Why am I so embarrassing? Whatever, whatever it is. Right. Um, why am I so? Why am I so? And these aren't actually your traits, but you're living as if they are, you know, well, you know, when I was a kid, they made fun of me for being clumsy. And, and now I'm just a clumsy person. That's not your trait. People drop stuff all the time. Uh, cringe. People are embarrassing all the time. You know, some people are just very open and transparent about it and other people aren't, but everyone who does something that's embarrassing to someone else. Like n even the coolest person, you know, does something that is literally cringe and embarrassing to somebody else. So it's not even really a trait. So there's no reason to cling so hard to it. You know, now I do have, now I am, I do think I am pretty clumsy sometimes, but it doesn't feel like a trait. It feels like a, my pages are kind of out of order. That's fine. I just need to get back to page 24. So it's not your type. Uh, that's your pattern. Also, oh, it's not your trait. That's your pattern. So, you know, you drop stuff and then, you know, everybody else drops stuff and spills stuff all the time too. But if you have a wound related to being clumsy or, or being stupid or inept, then of course you're going to cling to it more because that's your pattern. That's, that's like something I learned. What's one more? Oh, what's one more? I don't know. I'll 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 let it I'll I'll let that say. Most rewarding interaction. Uh now you I would feel this out more in depth, but download a new game and it's pretty fun. Uh this is a big deal for me because I don't often do things just for enjoyment these days. Right, because a lot of times, especially as a content creator, I try to film everything, and oh, I gotta set up the camera. I can't just play a game. I can't just listen to a song. I can I could do a reaction to this, and I can't just play a game because I could stream this, and I can't just make do my shadow work. It I think it'll help a lot if I did it parallel play style. So just downloading a game that just by my damn self uh, feels kind of refreshing. That's a big step for me. Now, have I? Put aside a lot of time to play it. No, but I think it's a start. This week I felt good. I felt good. Uh, yeah, man. Still sleepy. 
No, I've been I've been kind of lovey dovey this week. I've been kind of lovey dovey. Uh, I look forward to. You know what? And if you are unfamiliar with this, I do teach you how to make these pages step by step in the shadow work uh, journal making guide. But if you are here, hopefully you've seen that video. And if you're doing it side by side, hopefully you've seen that video. Uh, I teach you how to make this like from scratch. So and you could fill it out just like this with your own color scheme. It doesn't have to be blue. Uh, you, you can make it any color, but I teach you how to do like all of this. I look forward to playing my game and have a something delicious best thing about this week it's only wednesday you know what radishes some real good radishes some real good radishes um you know we'll give this week a five out of five because i said so <laughs> i'll give it a four Things I accomplished this week. Radishes. I ate some really good radishes. Uh, so now we're getting into our prompts. Uh, I always feel like it's good to kind of slip into these before just jumping straight into the make you cry questions. Like, I feel like shadow work shouldn't always be opening the journal. Here we go. Ready to cry again. You know, pen clenched in hand. I feel like before we get into these deep questions, you can always ease your way in. Uh, just ease. Uh, so here we go. First one I've got today. Okay. So we have our three questions. Uh, honestly, it hurt a lot more than I'm telling myself. And do I honestly think I'll ever get over it? And in what ways have I become more empowered? So we're going to end on a high note because I don't want to end it. Very, uh, I'm, I'm crafting an experience. Uh, So this is relatively anonymously and, and we can all talk about it in the comments or when I open the discord, we can all share it in the discord. But um, this is a good one. Honestly, it hurt a lot more than I'm telling myself. I think we all have one thing, uh, at least at least one thing like this. Um, and this is one of those prompts that you don't ramble like you don't. You're, well, you're supposed to ramble like you do. You don't go. Well, well, let me talk about a specific date and time. I mean, you could, but in general, it's just kind of like, yeah. Because acknowledgement is is key. So if, if maybe the next question might be, why? Why is acknowledging this so important for me? Right. So this is, you know, relatively anonymous, but we're not going to go too into the specifics. But, you know, honestly, it hurt more. I hurt a lot more than I'm telling myself. Now, this is one of those where you could really sit down. I'll put the date. 
Or you could really sit down and just go ballistic and like really write about all those times. Uh, I'll probably do that part more privately, but uh, this much I we you know we could talk about here. So yeah, acknowledging. Can you say acknowledgement? And I, I don't really try to make it perfect and grammatically correct because it's, it's shadow work and it's a shadow work journal. Like, who cares? So, uh, yeah, acknowledgement is as important. What is a important, is a powerful first step uh, facing the problem of being truthful? If you can't be truthful with yourself, who else can you truly, truly, truly be truthful towards? Uh, a lot of people try to make themselves Mother Teresa or or some, uh, what do you call them? Missionaries, right? But it's like, well, I can't heal myself and I can't fix myself and I can't love myself. But but I'll tell other people what they should do and can do. And a lot of and that, that's been like the elected, you know, now that's a good person. That's a real, I know it's not. That's this, that's imbalance. Now they do a lot of good. I'm not saying they're bad people. They do a lot of good. But who are they neglecting the most themselves, right? So if you have someone who is kind to 52 people, but there's one person they treat like garbage, like they beat them and they spit on them and they kick them. Would you say that's a good person? It's complicated, right? They'll do anything for like 51 people or 50 people will do anything. They'll, they'll feed them, they'll clothe them, they'll, they'll listen to them, they'll walk around with them, right? They'll hold their hand. Very kind, give them the shirt off their back. But that 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 person has one person that they beat up. They punch them and they kick them and they're spitting on them and they're cussing them out. They don't let them sleep. They don't let them eat. They're just very, very cruel. Would you say that's a good person? So when people get too into neglecting themselves. Yes, it is good that they're putting good out in the world, but they're neglecting themselves. It's still a person that they are very, very cruel to themselves. Uh, so, uh, and uh, acknowledgement is very important. Uh, it helps you advocate better for yourself. You can advocate for everybody else. You can advocate for those 50 people. You can advocate for those 60 people, but you can't stand up for that one. And that's the one who's going to be with you. You know, people say, uh, we're born alone, we die alone. Well, you know, you're born with yourself and you die with yourself. That's the one. That's your real ride or die. That's the one who's going to stick with you. That's the one who was born with you. And that's the one who's going to die with you. It's you. And your ride or die is the one that you want to let go of? Is the one that you want to sacrifice? Is the one you want to ignore? Your real ride or die? Now, you can put good out into the world and help people. I'm not saying that you can't. But I'm just trying to reframe uh, perspectives a little bit. Balance. Balance. Well, I'm totally selfish. And I won't help anybody else. That's not balance. Well, I'll help everybody else and, and neglect myself. That's not balance. <laughs> I'm thinking about that meme, that British guy rapping. He kept saying, oh, balance. <laughs> well, that's the truth. Balance. Uh, so the next prompt. Uh, do I honestly think I'll ever get over it? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, it's not funny. It's not funny, but it kind of is. No. Okay. You can say more about it. Uh like I said, this is just kind of very public. Uh so 
I'll probably answer more privately, but you know, do, do, do I honestly think I'll ever get over it? Uh, no, <laughs> some things. Yes. You know, forget for what forget, not even forget on purpose, just forget because it's like, you can't remember every piece of pain in your life. You remember like the big ones and a few of the small ones, but you can't remember every single one. Uh, just because I don't think you can, I think, I think it would be way too hard. Uh, but, but this particular thing uh, that is related to thing, this thing, no, I don't think I'll ever get over it. Like I can live my life and achieve what I need to achieve. I'm a little bit stuffy, but I think I'll always be just a little bit confused and hurt by it. And I think it's that confusion that's very complicated. So when you say, well, I know why it happened that way. And I know this person was just hurt and, and, and they were in a bad space and, and, I just happen to be doing this and they happen to be doing that. And I I understand, you know, we talk about our parents a lot in shadow work and how uh, they, they let us down a lot and how that kind of set up a very terrible foundation for a very terrible sequence of events. And we can sit down and and really uh, talk about why they may uh, have, have been the way they were narcissistic or, or violent or things like that. We can, we can, well, you know, their generation was, you know, we've got microplastics and, and all this other stuff. Their generation might have been exposed to like lead or asbestos or mesothelioma, right? And so that could have messed with them too. Um, uh, lowered, lowered their empathy, giving them like some sort of internal damage or brain damage. So yeah, you know, um, I have a... Uh, I have a family member who was a veteran and I can see why they would have anger issues and, and things like that. It's like we can always draw a map uh, that relates to why some, someone might do something or how, but you know, it's still that, that confusion because you know, it's that inner child going, Oh, I don't, I don't think I deserve that though. And you know, you didn't, but, but you want to extend that empathy. So do I think I'll get over it? No. Nah but I won't allow it to impede my life and my happiness. Uh, it was an experience I don't think I can forget. Now I have a couple like this. Uh, and in fact, right, I still feel angry about it and I'm allowed to feel angry when I think about it. I wouldn't tell a stranger, well, you shouldn't be angry. And and think about you. I wouldn't say that. I'd be like, hell yeah, you deserve to be angry about that. And and because I can give myself that space, at least I can say, you know, I'm allowed to feel angry. I don't sit here and push myself and go, well, you shouldn't be angry. You shouldn't be angry. Don't do that, especially during shadow work. No, don't let, don't use your anger to make you do something stupid, right? No, that's, that's probably what I think a lot of people are trying to say. Don't use your anger to do something stupid. But should you feel like, yeah, hell yeah, you should feel angry. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, but if you tell yourself you're not even allowed to feel that, it's kind of, that's, I give the example in the creatives guide, this, this one, it's class. I give the example there about uh, grabbing your own wrist and tugging it one direction, but then yanking your arm in another direction. So it's like, I'm grabbing my left arm with my right, with my right hand, right? Left arm. And I'm yanking my left arm left words. I'm yanking my left arm left. And, but I'm grabbing it with my right hand and pulling it right at the same time. And so it's just like a tug of war with yourself. And you don't really get anywhere. And you do that for uh, hours, days, weeks, months, years. Constantly from the minute you wake up to the minute you go to sleep. You're tired. So imagine you're tugging your arm like this all day long. Not for a couple seconds, but all day long. Now multiply that by weeks, months, and years. And that, that fighting against the stuff mentally fighting against uh, the subconscious fighting against yourself <laughs> and it will it will wear you out so going i i really want to feel angry about that and i would feel angry just you know my anger would be justified but but i'm not going to do it and and i'm better than that and anger is low vibrational whatever the hell people say uh keep that fight up if you want to but i feel like surprisingly it'll actually make you calmer to admit that you are allowed to be angry Right. Because there's le there's less of that fight. And that's actually what a lot of people need. You know, a lot of people didn't get that maternal 
you know, they didn't get that maternal or paternal uh, guide to teach them how to deal with issues and big emotions. When, you know, a lot of people just need that mom to pat them on the back. Go, yeah, you know what? That was crummy. <laughs> that was that was terrible. Uh, and that should have never happened. Right. Just a small little ounce of sympathy like that would go a long way. But if you don't have that, that mother going uh, or that father going, you know what? That was jacked up. You should you should feel angry. And you know what? I'm angry for you. Like if you don't have that, you will have to do that on your own. And you know, it's a double edged sword because on one hand, it's like, well, that's crummy because I already have to self sue. Why do I have to? You know, it takes a village to raise someone. Well, why? Why do you know? Why do I have to be the village? You know, what I got to be the mom and the dad. Darn it! At the same time, though, that's you. You now have that power. It can't be taken away from you. You know, you ever see someone freak out? And they're like, oh my god, I got, I got to call my dad for advice. Oh my god, I got to call my mom. And if that phone doesn't connect, they're just like shit out of luck. Like, oh my god, there's nothing wrong with that because that's what they're there for, and that's how relationships should be, right? That's how you your relationship with your parents should be but i'm just saying uh if you look at it as a negative that you have to uh self-soothe and, and do all this on your own there's multiple positives positive you can pass it on to other people another positive is you already have you always have that uh that inner monologue uh with you so you don't have to you know call up you know what i'm trying to say we we just did the chart. I told you <laughs> I'm low on glucose. <laughs> I'm trying to finish this. So in what ways have I become more empowered? Uh Tech, the text down here is kind of off. I could adjust it later. Uh, and I could really talk a lot about this. We might do this in somewhere else. Some, I don't know. But, you know, in what ways have I become more empowered? So we're ending on a higher note. Uh, we're not just thinking about the, the, the bad stuff. But I feel like it's a little bit related. What ways have I become more empowered lately? Well, some of the old things just don't bother me anymore. Like old stuff that used to bother me. I'm just like, Psh, whatever. And it's so natural, like, because it's not lying, like, well, that doesn't bother me, but secretly you're hurt. It's literally like, no, I feel, I feel a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter, because I'm just like, huh, I don't, you know, the big things, of course, still bother me, but small things, I'm just like, huh, that, yeah, I'm not really triggered by that anymore. And it's amazing. Uh, there's a lot of things I'm just simply less triggered by. Um, are we, do I don't know if we're going to do a meditation unit. In within the shadow work guide or meditation is going to get its own class because there's so many ways to meditate i don't want to teach it as well maybe, you know what maybe 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 i'll do meditation as as its own uh class rather than a unit because i feel like we could just talk about it for so so long but um now this is where uh the affirmations and the meditations and stuff have helped me well one improving my diet and eating less just junk in general uh, cleared up my mental health a lot but two uh knowing how to meditate and knowing how to do it right for you some people meditate best in the morning some people meditate best at night uh some people are in afternoon like i'm well i know my time right um i know how i have to be i know that i tend to meditate better when i'm fasting uh when my belly is full and I close my eyes, I go to sleep like within seconds, right? <laughs> but when I've been fasting uh, for a couple hours or for like a day or two, uh, it's so much easier for me to meditate and I just feel very connected. So um, I try to maximize. <laughs> I know it's meditation. You're trying to maximize and make it efficient, but I've, I found a way that works for me uh, that helps me with pursuing balance. Um, um, and most of it, we talked about it in the creatives guide about how a lot of pain, let me see, a lot of pain comes from, uh, 
this was a very good unit and it was so much fun so check out definitely check out the creators guide if you're experiencing uh burnout or uh writer's block or anything like that let me see there we go we talked about uh attachment in the in the burnout section in the creative guide about how a lot of pain is just comes from not being able to let go and become a new way of being so we said burnout first starts by you know if someone is ignoring their subconscious or subconscious is like let's slow down let's 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 take a breather let's take a break you know let's 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 ease up on the gas and then people one of the first things well i don't want to look lazy or oh i i need to make money so people don't think that that i'm I'm a, another starving artist or well, i need to have as many views and it's it's about identity right um it's not my soul needs to speak and it's not i have these beautiful things to put out in the world it's i've got to hit this quota i've got to you know it's it's holding on to identity and um this clinging you know if if i take a break and if, if i take a break too many times people will think i'm i'm lazy or weak it's pain comes from that and so we come back to the journal here pain comes from holding on too tight so if we uh come back to the journal here um empowerment came from letting go of a lot of things remember how i said that's not your trait that's your pattern you know why am i so clumsy why am i why am i so ditzy that's not your trait it's, you could have anemia <laughs> you could have adhd and you're not m maximizing your adhd remember we said uh, normal people who have normal levels of, levels of dopamine do the task then reward themselves with a dopamine activity they deplete their dopamine by working or doing the task they they start off with a good level though that's what you don't have <laughs> they start off with a good level of dopamine then they deplete it while working and then after working they're like boy i'm still glad i depleted my dopamine and then they do something relaxing to get their dopamine back up exercising uh working out uh watching something playing something they get it back up and then they you know have a rest cycle and then they start the new day and they work again if you have adhd you cannot jump into a task because you do not have the dopamine that other people already come equipped with <laughs> They come equipped with it and you can't tell because it's not visible. It's very invisible. You do not come equipped with the dopamine. So you have to treat yourself first. You have to do the entertainment first. And then once you get your dopamine up with the entertainment or the working out or whatever, that's why they say working out is, is very good because working out is not just about vanity. Working out is not just so you can pull an attractive partner or so you can be an attractive partner. Working out is <laughs> it's great for your dopamine. I learned the hard way. It's great for your dopamine. Fantastic. Uh, you get that high. You get that dopamine. And then you do your task and deplete your dopamine. And then you have to reward yourself. Again. Like with ADHD, it's terrible because you have to come up with your own cycle. But on the plus side, you have to reward yourself more often. So I guess you get more rewards. The only thing is you have to make sure your reward is healthy and sustainable, right? I can't. If, if, if I like chocolate bars, but I know that I need about four or five rewards a day to keep me going. I'm probably not going to reward myself with a chocolate, a full size chocolate bar four or five times a day. That's just not what my body can do. So, you know, my switch it up chocolate bar for one of the, one of the rewards, maybe break it in half, half a chocolate bar for a reward, another reward, another half a chocolate bar. And then whatever bubble bath for another, right? So, um, becoming i feel more empowered because i've become detached from certain traits um why do i have adhd it's so hard for me to and then i just hacked it for myself and i'm like oh it's actually not hard it's got to do things slightly different from everybody else and all those really loud really mean people on youtube going you're just unmotivated and lazy and ceos are getting they don't know what the hell they're talking about because i can't clearly they can't talk to everybody right they're not talking to you. If you if you got a dopamine deficiency, they're not talking to you. I get up at four a.m. every day, and, and you don't, and you're lazy. And just... well, that's well, that's you, buddy. Because my chemicals are kind of jacked up, right? So you know, and you'll and you'll be less clinging to just anybody's advice. Because a lot of people get on the internet and they and they try to give advice, and it's just kind of like hit or miss, right? Hit or miss. It's hit or miss. But if you don't understand who you are, then you. 
you're just going to kind of cling to everything. And there's so much advice and I'm so tired of it. Yeah. It's not that there's the problem. is not that there's so much advice. There's, the problem is that you try to identify with everything. There's so much dieting advice and I, and, and I can't, and I can't eat this, but I, but somebody else is, and there's, it, 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 the problem is not there's a lot of dieting advice because there's a lot of people in the world. The problem is that you try to cling to every damn thing you see, right? And you need to pull back a little bit and really, you know, and really just, there's so much advice. We have a course on manifesting. There's so much advice on manifesting and, and, I can't manifest it right because I'm not doing it like this and I and I don't have enough candles and I didn't do it like this and I got to do my shutter. There's so much and I, you know, I screw it. I don't want to do it anymore. No, the problem is not there's so much advice. There is a lot of crazy advice, but the problem is that you try to cling to every single thing you see and take it in and make it a part of you and take it in as a trait. And you're being pulled. It feels like you're being pulled in every direction. Not because there's a lot of information. If you're driving down the street, and there's like, a, it's like a four lane highway. They're, they're all going forward for a stretch, right? And then some of them are going to, you know, pull off into an exit. And some of them are going to continue going straight. When you're driving down a four lane highway, you don't swerve between all four lanes constantly going, I got, I, 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 there's just so many lanes. What do I do? There's just so many lanes. You stay in a lane that takes you straight while you while you need to go straight. And then when you see an exit, then you get on the, the lane that curves. There's so much information. There's so much information. Calm down. Where are you trying to go? What are you trying to do? What do you resonate with? What do you agree with? What do you what makes you feel kind of uncomfortable and you don't really agree with it? Uh, if you don't have candles or the money for candles, uh, sure you can watch some videos on candle magic, but maybe you might want to watch more guides on things you could do with products you have now. I mean, definitely bookmark them, right? If you want to do certain workouts, but you know you're not at the level to start doing those workouts. Yeah, watch them and save them. But maybe start looking at simpler ones you can start off with. Suddenly, there's not so much information. Suddenly, it's okay, this is relevant to me. This isn't. And uh, we might do a whole course on it. Because there's just so much. But um, you actually feel empowered. And like you have more direction. Um. And then you have to cult cultivate some originality. Many people don't do that. They don't cultivate originality. Uh, no original thought. Just rehashing, 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 rehashing. Which is nothing wrong with building upon uh, other people's uh, theories and works and things like that. Because that's what humankind does. That's what human nature does. We kind of build upon and build upon. But uh, everyone's trying to take on too much and make it their, their personality or whatever. And then no one's original anymore. No one does anything original. Everybody's just. Nobody's just original. So as you do your shadow work and you get to know yourself better. Um, keep that in mind. You know, the problem is there's a lack of originality. The problem is, you know, no one wants to make a routine that's good for them. Everyone wants a pre-made routine pre-made this pre-made that they can just fill in and then they go well why am i not ma i'm making okay process progress but why am i not making great progress because at a at a certain time you're gonna have to stop using the pre-made routines and do something made for you right this goes for diets this goes for relationship advice this goes for shadow work uh manifestation and well i'm not you know, inviting you to do closed practices just because you might feel like that's for you. Like you can f around if you want to. You didn't hear that from me. <laughs> I don't advocate that. I really don't. But I'm just saying. Um, so keep that in mind. Keep that in mind as you move forward in your shadow work. Uh, in what ways have you become more empowered? What have you detached from? What have you stopped identifying as? What have you started doing more originally? You know, that is original. And if you're at the stage where you're not doing anything original, it's always, you know, everybody else, everybody else, that's fine. But understand that that is a stage in the process. You're not going to stay in that stage. You know, we all start off with role models. All of our favorite artists start off with role models, but eventually they had to do something original, <laughs> right? <laughs> at some point, especially if they're, if they're big, they had to do something original. So think about that. Like think of the word originality a lot. Um, Think about things that you're taking into your identity 
that really don't need to be part of your identity. Like you can let it go. Right. And chalk it up to being a human. Humans are resilient creatures, but they're also pretty feeble. Our minds, you know, it is not hard to, uh, to, to, uh, humans aren't that difficult. Now they, they get kind of complex, but they're not like difficult. I don't know if you pick it up want to put it down, but it's just like, you know, you can have willpower all day, but sometimes if you haven't slept in like a month and you haven't been, you've been, you've been eating junk, then yeah, maybe a thousand and one affirmations and, and willpower, willpower is not going to help you, right? Everything's complexly interconnected, but at the same time, take a nap and have a meal. Sometimes it's simple. So separate from I'm an unmotivated person. Maybe you got something going on. Maybe you need a biohack, <laughs> biohack, biohack, get your dopamine up, check your serotonin levels, uh, biohack. So in what ways have you become more empowered? Think of the key terms, originality. Think of biohacking, <laughs> right? Think of biohacking. Think of originality. Think of balance. Um, and you'll just kind of feel yourself blossom and open up. Well, how am I original? Have I been doing anything original to me at all? Damn, let me think about that, right? <laughs> and if the answer for you is no, you haven't been doing anything original. Great. Fantastic. Because this is your starting point. Now that you have an awareness. Remember what we, what we set up here. Acknowledgement is a powerful first step. Now that you have awareness, you have not been doing a damn thing original. Now you can go on and, and it begin building that and you're not going to jump into it. You're going to build it. You're going to build it. Um, I'm still building it. You will forever build it, especially as a creator, especially as an artist, you will forever be building, building, but you got to start building sometime. Right. So keep all those turns in mind. I don't really rant for no reason. It's, it's everything's kind of like, everything is always connected. Everything is always just kind of connected. And I feel like, if it doesn't hit the first time you hear it, it'll probably hit the second or third. That's what a lot of my Don't worry, don't worry about it. Just it'll it'll if, if it didn't hit, it will hit. Um so really just uh marinate on this. Uh today today's shadow work was pretty fun. Um It it wasn't it was too heavy, it was pretty fun. So uh I'll catch you guys in the next one, I believe, uh, lesson two. Uh, and in between these lessons, we're going to be doing this self checkup because I, I do each lesson one a week, but in between, in between each upload, we're, we do like stuff like this. So definitely make your chart. I already told you how to do this in the first shadow work exercise. Uh, it doesn't have to have these exact phrases like you could put. I just put the feelings that I feel the most hungry, sleepy, overstimulated, right? Yours can be happy. Yours can be romantic. Yours can be depressed. Uh, whatever, like literally whatever need. And then you, if you take daily medication, you might have one of these as to take my medication. Uh, but that's you. So I'll meet you guys in the next one. We'll probably do another exercise in between uploading uh, lecture two. Lecture one was a doozy, but you know, just some, just some nice parallel play. Anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next one. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one and I'll see you later. Bye.